Shabbat Shalom Mitzvah TV. We're here for the most special Shabbos of all. Shabbat Shalom 613. Come take a look. It's a historic occasion. It's amazing. We're so proud of the city of Tel Aviv. Check it out behind me. It's the Guinness World Book of Records largest Shabbat dinner. This is a historic moment for Jews all over the world because we've never had this Jewish category entered into the Guinness World Records. And it's because the people of Tel Aviv themselves, through White City Shabbat, petitioned to make this Jewish category. And it's so special. And sharing in the Simcha with us are approximately 2,000 Jews and 2,000 Jews on the wait list and Jews all over the world who will be with us in spirit. Check out the scenery behind us as everybody's getting ready. It looks sort of like a movie premiere, except the star is Hashem. Behind me is Deborah Dehan, one of the organizers here at the event. She's doing an interview currently with J Post. She's uh, been monumental in terms of er editing, arranging, writing, getting funding. Uh, she's just a world champ for the World Book of Records. Um, White City Shabbat has been in existence, I believe, since 2007, and we've hosted uh, meals for up to 10,000 Jews, every time 200, 300 people. But this is clearly the largest Shabbat dinner that we've ever had, and actually that the Guinness World Records has ever had. Hi, with me now is Alex. He's one of the staples of White City Shabbat. How are you? Thank God, very good. Have you ever been to a Shabbat meal this size? No, never. Tell me, what does Shabbat mean to you? Shabbat? Who, how much time do we have? <laughs> okay. Um, Speak a little. What? Speak a little? Okay, from here? So Shabbat, for me, uh, first of all, I'm, I grew up not religious, so uh, Shabbat for me, I never knew about Shabbat. And I think uh, without Shabbat, I would be dead probably, because it's uh, like no, no, uh, no day uh, with re without rest. Uh, that's one thing. But the second thing is that during the week, you work and uh, you think about your physical life. And uh, there has to be a day when you think about other stuff outside of the physical. Hmm? Should we, uh, yeah. should we start again? No, no, okay. So, uh, you know, a day with uh, all when you focus on spirituality. How are you? Shabbat Shalom first. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, how are you doing? Thank, Baruch Hashem, thank God. Tell us, now, are you, f uh, what organization are you from? We're from Chabad, and this event is, uh, we're doing it together, Whitewood City, City Shabbat, and uh, Chabad also. Uh, we unite our groups together to make uh, Shabbat, big Shabbat in Tel Aviv. You see, going to be a thousand people, two thousand at least. And that it's all for the Shabbat, it's the honor of Shabbat, it's the honor of the, the Judaism. And it's only a start, Bezrat Hashem. We're going to do a big event in Israel. And that uh, we, we want to make, make Judaism cool. That's what we're going to do here. Now, let me ask you a question, because Chabad is one of the most successful outreach organizations that there is. Um, everyone, it, like Chabad, the way people think of coffee, they think of Starbucks. And when they think of Shabbat, they think of Chabad. And you can find a Chabad... Um, center anywhere around the world and know that you have a place to go for Shabbat. Can you tell us a little bit about the secret or how that came to be that Shabbat is so associated with Chabad? Um, first of all, thank you for the things you just said. Um, Chabad is an organization the Rabbi, the Rabbi from Lubavitch uh, told us to do everything for Judaism, everything for everyone and, and it's supposed to be including with mitzvah, mitzvah things and uh, we're supposed to bring every Jewish person to nurture their Judaism. That's, w that's what are we doing. That's all. One other question I have about Chabad that is for me an inspiration as someone that helps to organize these events. With Chabad, I see that um, you accept all types of Jews, all levels of Jews, and at the same time, you never lower your own level of halacha. What is the challenge of trying to cater to a community and at the same time not insulting anybody that may not keep Shabbat in the way that, that you do? Um, we try to do things good, things together. We not judge no one what he's doing. We just bring him, hey, this is good, this is Shabbat, this is Torah. You want to come? It's my joy. Don't want to? Just by being together, it's a good start for everything. So this, is the, this is the card. We have, we have uh, Avat Israel, and this is what we're going with. And uh, we're saving ourselves. Be, uh, we're doing it. How we do this? We save ourselves by, 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 by the power of the Rebbe. Give us the power to do everything. Shabbat Shalom, my name is Adi Elephant, a rabbi from Chabad Tel Aviv on campus. And I'm from Tel Aviv for seven years now.
Hi, Mr. Dahan. Hi, can we speak to you about your daughter's role in the Shabbat and, and if you've gotten any nachas from her uh, putting this together with her friends? Indeed. Yes, I, my name is Rachamim Dahan. I just uh, made my Aliyah last year from England and I'm a Sephardi from origin, from Moroccan origin and my daughter has been here now for the last 10 years or so. Yeah, she made her Aliyah in fact uh, quite uh, 10 years ago, yeah, something like that. And I've got plenty of nachat of this daughter. She's my unique daughter. She's my best daughter. This is my best daughter, and she's unique in the sense that she is special. Yes, she gives me a lot of nachat. And as you can see, yes, the atmosphere is really exciting. And the situation, the, 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 Baruch Hashem, I, I'm so happy to be here. It's a lovely atmosphere. This is the biggest, how do you say, city in. Uh, in Eretz Israel, and uh, as you can see, there is a mixture of uh, of kind of of people here. We don't distinguish between uh, secular and religious people. We are all Am Israel High. We are all the same. We are going from strength to strength. And uh, that Hashem, this uh, how they say this uh, Shabbos, which is the greatest Shabbos, the greatest Shabbos, has, uh, which has taken place. Yes, for, uh, with the, the Guinness records, we do hope is a precedent to the other communities in the world so that they can copy us, yes, and go from strength to strength and have also uh, ex uh, examples of this type of Shabbat. I mean, now I have a question for you as a father. A lot of children in this generation are what we call Balchuva, where they have taken on even more Yiddishkeit than their own family. Your daughter, I know this year, has gotten married and she's growing so much from what I've seen. What is it like as a parent to watch your, your daughter become religious? And do you have any advice for other parents whose children may be growing? I think, yes. In, uh, I would say, in fact, if we want to grow in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Jewish, how do you say, uh, religion and uh, we should take it very slowly now it has to be done step by step, by step and not too rash certainly not too rash I would advise to those those who want to become more and more involved with uh, uh, Yiddishkeit and to grow in Judaism yes to take it very easy and naturally it shouldn't be really very sharp or something like that because uh, uh, they are already, how do you say, uh, it's a tremendous effort which you have to make and it should be really natural, it should come naturally. And uh, or my, this is the way my daughter is taking Deborah, yes, she takes it at, at her pace and uh, Baruch Hashem and she loves it and she enjoys it. The most important is to enjoy whatever you're doing in fact and when you grow in, in Judaism the most important is to grow Wonderful. in. Can you do me a favor, can you say your name, where you're from and Shabbat Shalom? Yes. Well my name is Rachamim Danan. As I was saying before, I am from Morocco. I lived for the last 27 years in England in Eretz Israel, and I came on Aliyah last year from, and I wish everybody Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much. Behind me I see running around and doing everything as usual is Jay Schultz. I believe that this was the brainchild of Jay. Jay uh, is one of the original founders of White City Shabbat. I don't know if we can get him right now because he's busy. But um, we have here also the kippahs with uh, White City Shabbat's logo. These are new kippahs. Very special with the Guinness World Book of Records. And uh, let's see. Uh, do you want to come and say hi? Is this your family? Wonderful. Would you would you like to say hi with us? Shabbat Shalom. What's your name? Shaya. Shaya. Shabbat Shalom. Shaya. Veima. Shoval. Veaba. Moti. Moti. Shabbat Shalom. So much for my open. Fine. Where are you from, and what brings you to Tel Aviv today? Okay. We are from uh, Tel Aviv. We live uh, near to the Nemal and uh, we want to celebrate the big uh, Seuda, Seuda Teya Shabbat Gdola. It's a mitzvah Gdola and we have the um, uh, opportunity to be with all uh, the people here and to be together. It uh, gives a lot of power to all the Jewish uh, uh, in all, all over the world. That's what I think.
Now, I have a question for you. I don't know if you, maybe somebody could help me to speak to her. What, what is the favorite thing that your mother makes for you to eat on Shabbat? What's your favorite thing? Pasta. Pasta? Very nice. What kind of pasta do you make for Shabbat? Um, it's mixed uh, pasta with um, uh, tomato uh, juice, of course, and uh, pargiot, she forgot maybe, and with pargiot. That's the most, uh, uh, the favorite food she likes. Now, I want to ask her also, does she have any special dresses that she wears only on Shabbat? Yes. What color is your favorite special Shabbat dress? White. White. White is the color. White is a beautiful color for Shabbat. White is like the Shabbos queen. It's so nice to see you. Shabbat Shalom. Will you say your family name, where you're from, and Shabbat Shalom to us? Wait, wait, take, take. Ah, Shalom. Nechmat Tzar Shalom. And we are from Israel, Tel Aviv. And Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. From Shabbat Shalom. From Shaya. Hi, Jay, how are you? We're going to snag you before you get busy. That's great. Hi, hi. Who, who is this? This is Omer with White City Shabbat. Right. Now, whose idea was this originally to petition Guinness World Book of Records? Uh, Kaddish Baruch Hu gave it to all of us directly. Thank you very much. Amazing. Shabbat Shalom, how are you? Now, you must be a very proud parent. Can you tell us what brings you to the Guinness World Records largest Shabbat meal? Well, uh, my daughter is the co-director of White City Sh Shabbat, so that's why I'm here and I'm very proud of their initiative. And I wish them every success, every Hatzlacha, and they should go from strength to strength. And it's a wonderful, wonderful organization and what they're doing is just incredible. <laughs> Let me ask you a question also as a parent. Now, a lot of parents try and instill Jewish values on their... Can I give you this for a second? A lot of parents try and instill Jewish values on their children so that um, the sense of Yiddishkeit will be passed from generation to generation. What's maybe two things that you really hoped Deborah would, would carry with her as she became her, you know, a, a woman, a wife, and what have you seen in terms of her living in Tel Aviv that she's able not only to cap, keep in her own family but to help spread for other people. My son-in-law gave me a copy of an article, uh, a speech that made that uh, her great-great-grandfather who was the chief rabbi in, um, in Morocco gave at the time and he talked about the importance of, of Shabbat and how holy it was and that there were more and more people not keeping Shabbat. So he, he said, we must do something so that people should keep it. And he said, but we have to do it with gentleness and we have to do it sweetly. And I think this is what Deborah is taking forward. She's doing it in a way that's non-coercive and she produces uh, um, uh, um, a little sheet on the, the Pasha every week and she's spreading it this way and through the White City Shabbat and a number of other ways. Thank you. Could you say your name, where you're from in Shabbat Shalom? Right, my name is Melanie Danan. I live in Ramad Bet Shemesh, originally from London. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. How are you? I'm great. Where are you from? Uh, Mitzvah TV with White City Shabbat, and where are you from? Hi, I'm from Galaital. Hello. Can you tell us um, why is, is covering this event so important, and what do you hope people will learn about Shabbat or Tel Aviv by hearing your program or by coming to this event? Oh, well, uh, breaking the Guinness record is obviously a way to uh, bringing this into uh, people's uh, knowledge uh, first of all uh, but uh, you should listen to a program and tell me yourself <laughs> thank you very much you. Um, are you are you currently in the Israeli army yeah of course and what does it mean some people say Shomer Shabbat to be a defender of Shabbat how is being part of the army in itself protecting Israel which protects and guards the Shabbat well I can be the army spokesperson uh, but uh, y you said it yourself. Thanks. Thank you. With me now is Eitan White, one of the founders of White City Shabbat and 
one of the main event producers here at the Guinness World Records' largest Shabbat meal. Eitan, can you tell us a little bit about the history of, of White City Shabbat and how you came to be involved? Sure. Um, basically, we started White City Shabbat as a place for Olim, people without family. They were a place to eat Shabbat dinner, Friday night dinner, as they were brought up traditionally. And they came here, they made Aliyah, they didn't have family, they didn't have a place to go. And this became kind of a forum for all them to come enjoy Shabbat meals as a community and as a family together. Now, I spoke to somebody from Chabad earlier, and they said that Chabad sort of came to be partnering with you in terms of uh, bringing people or promoting the event. So, but you don't seem like you're necessarily Chabad. What does it mean to work with Let's other... Away. <laughs> what does it mean to work together, and why is Achdus unity with Klal Israel so important to you or White City Shabbat? Wow, that's, that's an intense, intense question. Uh, I mean, for us to work with Chabad was an amazing opportunity. I think we see eye to eye on a lot in our, in our overall mission. We may go about it in different ways, but uh, we definitely have the same fundamental understanding that all of Am Yisrael needs to work together and needs to come together, hopefully here in Israel. And this event really showcased that opportunity for us for bringing 2,000 plus people in one place to have a Shabbat meal in one place and, and, and we, I don't know if you've heard this so far but we actually had a waiting list of over 2,000 people so I mean Bezrat Hashem Shana Ba Oshna Time whenever that'll be 5,000 people I mean that's our goal Well, this is a perfect opportunity. Here we have every type of Jew, every type of Jew from everywhere in the world, from Olim to tourists, to people who have been living here for their entire lives, or 10 years, five years, whatever it is. We have every type of Jew from Chiloni to Haredi. And this is an opportunity for them all to sit together, enjoy the same meal, walk away with the same giant smile on their face, and to understand that we are Amichad, that we're one nation, and that when we work together, there's nothing, there's nothing we can't accomplish. And you have here, you have the chief rabbi of Tel Aviv, you have the, the mayor of Tel Aviv, two people with different opinions on Shabbat. And they're gonna sit here at the same meal together, enjoy the same meal, and be a part of this amazing event that we've all put our blood, sweat, and tears into accomplishing. Now, if I come to a White City Shabbat event and I really like being part of Shabbat, is there anything else that I can do to stay connected to White City or are there any other types of programming that you do? Uh, so we're just starting to get involved in other programming. We actually have a weekly Parsha Shir at the Goran Shul every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock with Rabbi Shlomo Chayen. Um, aside from that, we're, 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 this, is our, this is our basically, I guess you'd call it a flagship event. This is the first major mega event we've ever done. Up until now it's been Parsha Shirs once a week and 200 person meals once a month. And you know, that sounds like a lot, but compared to what we're doing right now, it, it's, it's small fries. So hopefully we can use this event to catapult ourselves into bigger and better and more events in the future that can bring every type of Jewish activity to every type of Jew in Israel. And are there any other groups like Tel Aviv Arts Council that you want to, are you involved with or that people should know about? For sure. We have a number of sister organizations uh, all under the same Amuta. The Am Yisrael Foundation, which is an umbrella for the Tel Aviv International Salon, Adopt the Safta, the Tel Aviv Arts Council, White City Shabbat. Um, we're, we're here to provide pretty much every type of programming that you can think of in English for every type of ole that comes here. It all exists in Hebrew already, uh, and we're trying to provide it in this second universal language for Israel. Uh, everyone speaks English worldwide, more or less. Uh, but here in Israel, obviously, Hebrew is the number one language. So we have a lot of Olim. English is the only language that connects them all. So we try to provide programming of every type for every type of uh, OLED that there is. So my name is Eitan White. I'm originally from New York. I've been living here in Israel for seven years. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, I'm Dan, I'm Tel Aviv. Shabbat Shalom Lachem. Thank you. Can I, can I talk to you about Shabbat? Do you mind? Wonderful. What's your name? Idan. Idan. So, have you ever been to a White City Shabbat meal before? No, never. Wonderful. You're so welcome to come. Who invited you? Uh, my wife. 
Yeah. And were you also with her in Thailand? Yeah, twice. So can you talk a little bit about um, what it's like to be a Jew outside of Israel and finding a place to keep Shabbat? Oh, I, th I think it's awesome. I think it's like, it's more than just a Shabbat. It's uniting us and so making like something special for us. I think even in our broad Israel, it's something even more special. It's like, I don't know, it's, you cannot describe it in words, but it's something inside you that make you feel more Jewish, uh, more than if you are here, here in Israel. Um, it's amazing. So I've been there twice and I hope to do it again. Beautiful. And who lights the Shabbat candles in your home? Ah, my wife. Your wife. Yeah. Wonderful. So do you follow other Jewish traditions? Um, yeah, I, I can say that my family is quite religious, so we celebrate all the holidays. Um, Pesach, Rosh Hashanah, we dress up in Purim and we uh, eat uh, milk uh, products in uh, Shavuot and we eat kosher in Pesach. So pretty much do all the Jewish uh, holidays and um, um, Yom Kippur, of course, which is important. So, yeah, pretty much. And tell me, if you're not at this particular meal, describe to me a normal Shabbat. Do you have guests or do you go to somebody's house? What is Shabbat like for you in Tel Aviv? In Tel Aviv? Um, well, usually in Tel Aviv, the, the Shabbat are not that uh, religious. So we're gathering some friends, um, eating stuff that each one of us brings. But our family uh, meals are, have the Kiddush and the candles before it and then the, the challah and then we eat our uh, dinner together and sing songs so a family uh, Shabbat meal is pretty much stay as it was all over the years. Thank you so much. Shabbat Shalom. Hello, my name is Rafael Aduram. I'm from Herzliya. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. How do you call it? Orly Tamir. Orly Tamir. Shabbat Shalom. Where are you from? Originally from New York, and then eight years ago, my family and I made Aliyah to a yeshuv called Shorashim up in Mizgav near Carmiel. Wow, you have a much better accent than me. <laughs> so in eight years, I could sound as good as you? Hopefully, hopefully. Take some work. <laughs> now, can you tell me a little bit about um, what you'd normally do on a Shabbat? Um, normally for me, Shabbat is about rest. It's about my time as somebody who's an officer in the army. I finally get time to myself, I get time to think about what I did this past week and about what I'm going to do next week. It's time for me and it's time for my relationship with God um, and it varies. It could be to go to Kabbalah Shabbat and Ma'ariv and to have dinner with amazing friends or it could be for me to just sit and be with my thoughts and myself and uh, what, it's whatever is right for me at the time. No, I haven't, and I'm very excited to go. Oh, so you, okay, fine. So you were, you've never been to a Shabbat meal before with White City Shabbat. Who invited you? My friend Sierra, <laughs> co editor, and Arsene. <laughs> they invited me. Hi, Sierra. Hold on a second. How are you? Hold on. So apparently you have been to White City Shabbat before. Uh, so I haven't. Um, <laughs> my fiancé... Is uh, works with White City in the Tel Aviv salons, and and that's how our that's what our connection is. Wonderful. Um, so maybe you know a little bit about some of the other programming, or you've heard about some of the other things that we do. Can you um, share your experience or what you've seen in terms of w what your husband's able to do when he's working, and how does that make you feel as a wife that he's helping other people? Um, so one of his many many jobs is to. Uh, I used to help battle and fight anti-Semitism in Europe as being a journalist and, and with the Israeli Jewish Congress. Um, <laughs> and it, I'm firstly being part of being being part of Shabbat is or any Shabbat is it's fun for me. I enjoy it. we, you know, we always have Friday night meals uh, with friends or with family. Um, we're part of one of the many small minyanim uh, that like hops around the city. So for me, it's not something that's such a foreign concept. Mm -hmm. And um, you talked about Shabbat all over the city. And some people have talked about Tel Aviv as being a secular city. What does it mean to you to be part of Shabbat uh, in a secular or religious way and accepting different people? And, and how does that translate to your table when you have all different types of guests? Um, so. For me, Shabbat is a time of of just being quiet. It's allowing all the craziness of the week to uh, to just melt away. Um, I, you know, I'm 
taking part in of Shabbat is something that we've been doing for generations and generations, and I'm very thankful to take part in it. And you talked about having meals in your own home. What are some of the things that you cook? Oh, the, the typical. You have your chicken, you have your potatoes, you have your onions, your vegetable, kale. That's a big thing on our table these days. Um, chicken soup, tomato soup if we're having a dairy meal. Kind of, it really all depends on what you know what's growing in season. I'm Tier, and I'm originally from Richmond, Virginia. Been living in Israel for seven years. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> I'm Orly, I'm originally from New York, Westchester, New York, and now I live in Tel Aviv. My family lives in a Yeshuv Shorashim in Mizgav up north. Shabbat Shalom. Hi, my name is Arsene Ostrovsky. I'm from originally Sydney, Australia, now Israel. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. So I made Aliyah almost two years ago, and uh, Teal of Internationals was one of the first things that I became involved in as an Ole Hadash, and over the time I've become more and more involved and uh, in different parts of the all the different events they have, but particularly the the TV Salon and the Ambassador Series, and whenever I can, I always try and go to the White City Shabbats as well to um, you know to be with other Olim, other English-speaking members of the community, to share in the experience of Shabbat when we're away from home uh, together. So it's a special experience, and I'm looking forward to tonight very much. Shabbat Shalom. המקום מדהים, האווירה מחשמלת וזה המקום הכי טוב שיש בעולם היום, תל אביב, בעיר הקודש ותשמעו, תראו מה קורה פה, כל הצעירים של תל אביב פה מקבלים את השבת גם אלן דרשביץ פה, עורך דין מאוד ידוע ותבואו לישראל, כל טוב שמיר כהן, תל אביב, שבת שלום now, where do you usually go to daven, to pray on Shabbat? I go to a few different synagogues. Can you talk about that? It seems in Tel Aviv, people move to a lot of different synagogues, and they're constantly on the move and, and uh, meeting friends. And can you tell a little bit about the Tel Aviv shul experience? Because I know I've seen you in shul, so. You have? <laughs> um, I go to all different synagogues. I like to go to Frischman shul and support Rabbi Ariel, because he's trying to do something really good. And the one at 126 is fantastic. I think what they they don't need any people, whereas Ariel does. And I just think it's great. I also go to Chabad, and I try to support all of them because I'm just happy they're all trying to bring people in. But I think this is a fabulous initiative because you're bringing people in from all different aspects of Judaism. You've been to White City events before, right? Yes. Can you describe a little bit about how you heard about White City and uh, yeah, yeah, the type of events you've been to? Okay, I found out about White City through Jay and I met him through another one of his initiatives. It's Tel Aviv Salon and I guess it, I stood out because I bring up the average age. So <laughs> I met him there and then I got included in the mailing list. As you can see, I'm much older than most of the people here but I'm thrilled to see this happening in Tel Aviv. Now, I hear you're talking about like the different ages. I'm also not married, so don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm 20, 30 years older than you. But, Sorry. but I'm looking for a husband. <laughs> okay, uh, nice young lady. She's looking for a husband. What is it that you're looking for in case anybody here is watching and knows somebody? I have a problem. I'd like someone who actually is Shomer at Shabbat, or if not, at least cares about Shabbat or being Jewish. <laughs> Wonderful. One of the well, traditions. I hope you find someone. Amen. Thank you so much. One of the traditions that we sort of have in in uh, Jewish everyday culture is like constantly setting people up, matchmaking, pushing to get married. Married. So it's interesting in, in a city like Tel Aviv, which is like known as a single city, that people still want to help connect and try and get married. Could you talk a little bit about? I'm gonna the uh, single life in Tel Aviv as you see. I think it's fabulous for people in their 20s and 30s and for ones who aren't religious and then if you're older than that much more difficult and perhaps if you're religious go to Jerusalem. My name is Susie Kaufman, I'm originally from Australia but made Aliyah by New York and Shabbat Shalom to everybody and I think this is fantastic to see so many people coming here together to celebrate Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom. Um, can you tell me a little bit, I've seen you guys in the Tel Aviv scene before, can you talk a little bit about what does it mean uh, to be, be keeping Shabbat in Tel Aviv? Let's, why don't you start? <laughs> Ooh, tough question. Um, keeping Shabbat in Tel Aviv is like you're moving 
at a different pace than the rest of the city. Everyone's living life like normal, and you're just like moving through that normal life, but in a different dimension. And you're going to shul, or going to a picnic, or going to someone's house for lunch. And it's like you exist in like two different dimensions, essentially. Just cool. Well, I guess growing up in Chutz Aretz, I'm used to it. So it's not really a challenge, it's what I'm used to. And for me, Shabbat in Tel Aviv is, um, I'm, I'm uh, used to Shabbat. I've been keeping it for most of my life, for all my life. And uh, it's nice to see people that are very um, uh, diverse, very, um, uh, there's, a, there's a, a wide range of people in Tel Aviv, of different kinds of religious and not religious people that celebrate Shabbat together. And it's beautiful, I think. <laughs> We were on a photo walk through 52 Frames, um, which is this photography group, and that's how we met. Marnina Herman, Toronto, Shabbat Shalom. Yonatan Elazari from uh, Israel, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Now, what brings you here to White City Shabbat in Tel Aviv? Well, this is my first um, Shabbat in Israel. And, um, Shabbat Shalom. Mazel tov. Ruchim habayim. Thank you. And um, what really brings me here is um, searching for something more. So um, coming from Brooklyn, New York, when I told everyone that I was going to um, a Shabbaton in Tel Aviv on 613, they kind of gave me a, a weird look and said, Tel Aviv, why would anybody um, go to a, a Shabbos there? And um, I just laughed and I said, well, I'm going. And um, a lot of other people are going too, 2,000 people. And um, I'm excited to be here. And as you see around, there's many different types of um, types of Jews here, and it's really lovely to see all of us united as one, um, all here to um, keep this Shabbos. And I'm very excited. Otherwise, the pursuit of justice is a theoretical abstract. You have to combat the injustice. And as the a Rambam would say, how do you combat the injustice and how each one of us can do it? And with this I close, each one of us is to see the world is divided into half evil and half good. And therefore, one mitzvah, one good deed by any one of us can transform the universe. And so each one of us has the privilege of being able to participate in that profound sense of tikkun olam through one mitzvah. And just think about it, that every day we do one good deed, we will be transforming the scales of the universe from evil to good. Shabbat Shalom. I'm actually a former pilot in the Air Force and I'm Jay Schultz's adopted father. I came in Aliyah myself some 35 years ago. And in welcoming you, I'll start with one word of Torah, which leads us to the most important thing a little bit more seriously. Everybody knows, Ms. Mor Shir Lioma Shabbat. Does anybody know who wrote those words? Anybody? I'll give a free dinner tonight to anybody who knows. Exactly correct. Many people said King David. It was written really by Adam HaRishon. How do we know that? Because the words are, Tov lodot Hashem ulotamer Adam HaRishon, Adam was born exactly at this time, or he was created at this time. He didn't know when the sun went down there would ever be another sunrise. Can you imagine his fear and his absolute trembling all night long until he knew that the sun would rise the next morning? And when it did rise, he woke up and he said, Tov lodot Hashem ulotamer So together, I want all of us in the spirit of Adam HaRishon, in a time which is very difficult, in which we need to have hope and prayer, to all join in prayer for the, for the people who, whose fate we do not know today, the people from from, from, Etzion, from Bush Etzion, let us all say a prayer on their behalf, and we hope that very soon we'll be able to say Tov Lodot Lashem. Rabbi Shlomo, can you talk a little bit about um, how you've seen Shabbat grow in Tel Aviv, and what do you think are some of the things that made people really come together in the spirit of Shabbat? Okay, um, so Shabbat, when I came four and a half years ago, wasn't really big. Besides at my house, we used to have 15, 20 people, you've been to the Friday night dinners. And I think that White City Shabbat really built it into something that 
is, is something cool. It's like Nike, just do it, or whatever it is. It's, it's, a, it's a symbol already. And people, secular, religious, uh, Anglos, internationals, Israelis, they feel that it's a cool thing to do. And I think it's an amazing thing that White City Shabbat did. And I think it's returning Shabbat to what it really is. It's a Shabbat menucha, it's a Shabbat for the nefesh, for the soul, for the people around us. And Halevai, that it spreads around the country, that it becomes something that it's for everyone, every family, every person, men and women, feel the importance of Shabbos on them. So I work in Eish Tel Aviv. Um, Eish Tel Aviv was formed six years ago here in Tel Aviv. That the goal was to basically bring the Jew, Ju Judaism to the Jews. It's for the Jews, Jews to feel their Judaism, to learn about it, to uh, see it. So we also, we were part of the White City Shabbat at the beginning. We helped do the, uh, the meals. We tried bringing it more to Israelis. Today we have, much, we have different type, types of dinners. We might have them at the same time even. We have like 60, 70 on the beach. We have a center on the beach. We have different classes, different uh, things happening all the time. We have a center on the beach, center in Israeli, to really bring the Jewish people back to their heritage, to their Moreshit, what's called. So I think it's two main things. One is that it's, it's humanistic. We're just talking, we're talking. We're not trying to, I'm not coming to tell anybody what to do. I'm trying to show them the Jewish wisdom. That's what I'm trying to do. And I think that that's what everyone can connect to. It's something that our soul connects to. Something that is authentic, without politics, without uh, trying to, without an agenda, but to actually just educate and give spirituality to a person. I think that reflects upon people and they love it. The second thing is, is that they see that we're young rabbis, they see that we're normal people. We're not those uh, scary uh, rabbis that everyone thinks about or that the media sometimes put up on posters. And it's easy to relate to, so I think those are the two main things. My other question is, because you're a part of a different organization, Aish, how come there's not some sort of co competition between you and other organizations? What does it mean to have Achdus Yisrael, unity in Israel, and how is that something that can not only help if organizations work together, but if people work together? So, I think you said it, is that Achdut is the secret here, and when you understand that one plus one is not two, but it's actually three, and it's much more, because the strength of two is multiplied into synergy that we can actually create something much greater with two people rather than one. So I'm best friends with Jay and with all the organizers here, Eitan and, and Natalie, and everyone that put it together really did an amazing job. And even though we're doing different things, I'm still there for them and they're there for me. We help each other. They had a lot of halakhic questions throughout the, the, the creating of it and I was there and I helped them. And I think that that's what's beautiful is that if we understand that it's not about our personal pride, and we're not putting ourselves first, but we're actually putting Am Yisrael first, then we all, uh, uh, we all just get into it. We all feel that it's a part of, of a greater thing that we all want to be a part of. It's a greater cause. And I think that that's the secret, the Achdut. Now, let me ask you um, one last question. I know I've seen you uh, in synagogue when there were not so many people, and now you're a rabbi, so you wouldn't lie to me, right? Can you tell me what, if you could calculate, because Guinness is all about numbers, could you calculate the growth that you've seen in terms of people attending shuls or being part of Shabbat meals from when you first came to Tel Aviv to now? So you're talking about, first let's start with the specific shul you're talking about, the shul that we had six people and we would drag people from the streets, that today has 200 people every Shabbat morning. And which shul is that? That's the Ben Yehuda 126, where White City Shabbat does a lot of its events. Um, so the secret there was the chillin. It's like the famous movie, if you build it, it will come. We decided if you cook it, they will come. And I think that again, we found something very authentic that any Jew can connect to. The Sholem, the Jachnun, the authentic food and the fun of just sitting, saying Kiddush together, singing together. Getting that vibe is something very, very important. I think that's part of what also this created is that a shul is not only a, 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 just a place that you come and only if you're religious you belong. It's a community center. It's a place that if you're Jewish, you can come and pray there. You can come and find a rabbi that you can relate to there. You can come and find your Yiddishkeit there. And I think that that's an amazing thing that happened. And I think that it grew tremendously. In the five years, it's four and a half years already that I'm here. It's amazing. It's amazing to see. I don't think that more people, I'm sure more people came. But I think the people that are here just feel much more comfortable in coming already to the shuls and to Friday night dinners. And I think that's amazing. So. So I wish White City Shabbat that this should be a beginning 
This should be the beginning of the world of the world records. We should have many more world records that we should break. I hope that we, Bezrat Hashem, bring all of Am Israel to here and create one long hangar that we bring 100,000 people to create one big white uh, white city Shabbat that all of Am Israel will sit with the Mashiach at the head of it and we'll all sing with him together, Bezrat Hashem. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> לא נתתו לגויי הארצות, ולא ינחתו מרכינו לעובדי קצינים, וגם בתנוחתו לא ישתנו הרעילים, כי אם לישראל עמך נתת, אנחנו צריכים במתנה, והעולם כולו, וכל הדתות המונותאיסטיות, שאב מאיתנו את הרעיון של שבת קודש, שויכל אלוקים ביום השביעי מלאכתו אשר עשה וישפוט ביום השביעי מכל מלאכתו אשר עשה, ויברך אלוקים את יום השביעי ויקדש אותו, כי בו שבת מכל מלאכתו. היי, איך אתה? אתה מחבן? כן. So we were speaking with some other Jews here that said that they came here because of Chabad in Thailand. Can you tell us a little bit about um, where Chabad is all over the world and how do you attract people to come to you to, to celebrate Shabbat? I, know, I believe that it has nothing to do with the branch of Chabad Thailand or Chabad Cyprus or Chabad Nepal. It's about the neshama of every Jew. Then whatever he is in the world, he feels that he wants to be close where Am Israel sits together and feels Shabbat. And this is the wonderful answer. Many people here from different colors, different uh, understanding, everybody gets together, not because this organization, organization or any other organization, they're all here because the feeling inside of you, the heart of you knows Shabbat is coming and we all have to stick with Shabbat. Amazing. Could you tell me your name, where you're originally from and Shabbat Shalom? Rabbi Zev Raskin, I live in Cyprus now. I'm originally from Israel. Good Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. How has Tel Aviv grown in terms of what you see as a witness to Yiddishkeit in Tel Aviv? I am always an optimist and I usually see the half glass which is full and not the half glass which is empty. Because if you are thirsty, you can use only the full half glass and not the empty one. So this is the only thing, if you know that there are 547 shuls in Tel Aviv which are open daily, twice a day, and people are there in the morning and in the evening. Some of them are busy from the morning till night. Kolelim, Yeshivot, see at them. If you see the 970 food business in Tel Aviv, who ask for a kashrut, for a certificate of kashrut. It means there is a demand wow. of people. 970 in one city, kosher, and they are ready to pay for it and to keep strictly the Shabbat because all the 970 are closed on Shabbat. Otherwise, they wouldn't receive a certificate of kashrut. So why to look outside and to see what is secular? Why don't you see what is holy? If you know what Dafa Yomi is, every day a page of Gemara, 200 shiurim of Dafa Yomi exist in Tel Aviv today. Wow. I see the half full glass and not the empty one. Wonderful. May I have a bracha? Shir Michal Batfega Blimeh. You gave it to me when I was with Shuvu. And you, you, uh, it was a beautiful bracha when I first made Aliyah. And now that I'm here, I would like a husband, please. Shir Michal Batfega Blimeh. Shabbat Shalom Lach. Hashem Yevarech Otach. Levanim Uvanot. Oskim Bemitzvot Kol Yemei Chayehem. Vihim Mekorech Baruch. Amen. Amen.
We're still waiting for our Ernst Young expert to get here, and we will. Here we are, here we are. Ah, and, he, and, and here we are as well. Is somebody from Guinness here? So together with Blaine. Uh, Mr. 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 Ernst or Mr. Young? <laughs> get over here. I'll be sorry for me away. I know. Pleasure, pleasure. I'm Prince Dino. Thank you so much for being short. Okay, sir, this is Mr. Patel from, from the Guinness World Records. The Guinness World Records, a judge, an adjudicator. He owns this jacket. He didn't just know. Very Ernst Young, a CPA, high, an executive, very important.